Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we're going to take a look at a Simic Tempo deck that has been taking the ranked ladder by storm. I seem to see this everywhere that I look all of a sudden. And to give credit where it's due, I got the deck list from a tweet from Martin Yuza. Martin Yuza made a red list that became very popular, kind of the default red list in the last format. And now it seems he's back to work on this blue-green tempo thing. Uh, he did a 14-hour stream with Frank Karsten, who is a very well-known Magic player and commentator as well. And they just totally smashed up the ladder a lot with this thing. So it became a popular deck. You see it all over the place now, and we need to explore what it does, see if it's the right deck for you to craft or play, as it is close to a budget deck, not a lot of rares. When we look up and down the list, we see Entrancing Melody, Night Pack Ambusher, a 4-4 Flash Wolf, which is a new rare from M20. Other wolves and werewolves get plus one, plus one, and at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't cast a spell, create a wolf. So the idea is, if almost all of your stuff is instant speed and flash, you can make more wolves. There's also some temples of mystery, which you may not have crafted yet, but probably will need to at some point. But I think, I mean, you could try unclaimed territory, but then it doesn't cast both the ambusher and the mystic. You could run some forests. I don't know about that. But uh, yeah, pretty close to a budget deck, which is one of the serious upsides of it. It's not a heavy investment to craft. But really quick, some channel announcements. So. I will be going in less than two weeks now, like a week and a half from now, I'll be getting on a plane and going to Barcelona and I won't be back for two weeks. So I'll be on vacation. So I don't want to leave you without content. I am committed to my YouTube audience. I've made a serious commitment to spend this year trying to make the absolute best of my YouTube channel. If you like the content, please remember to like the videos, leave a comment and subscribe to show you that you're into it. Really helps, helps me know if I'm on the right track. And uh, part of that commitment is a daily video, which I'm really pushing myself to keep up even when I travel. So I'm recording a lot of videos in advance. Now, I don't magically have an extra hour to two hours a day to make content with. Unfortunately, I have less time than ever as I have to prepare my other business for this trip because it also has to exist while I'm gone. Um, for those of you who don't know, content is not my full-time my full time thing. I run a t-shirt business, hauntedflower.com, link in the description. Please consider purchasing a shirt. Um, and. Because of that, I've got a lot of work to do before I can travel at all. So <laughs> what I'm basically saying is I'm going to be stockpiling videos so that you'll still have a video every day while I'm gone. The free to play account and the live account probably won't update while I'm gone. I highly doubt that I'll be able to record extra content for those. But this main account with a new deck every day should update while I'm gone every day with a new video and a new deck. But I've got to record them in advance. So the recorded videos, so you know what to expect, might be a little bit shorter than you're used to. Instead of getting into like the 35 to 40 minute range, we're probably going to be doing uh, a couple videos with like three games, 20 minute range, something like that. Get in, get my butt kicked, get out. Still trying to give you a, a unique deck every day. And for those two weeks I'm gone, if there's a dramatic meta-breaking event, you may not get a deck from me on it like you normally would. But um, in the meantime, I'm going to do my best to continue making sure that you have your daily free entertainment here on the YouTubes. Thank you so much for all the support. If any of you want to support the channel monetarily, want to show me that what I'm doing is working and you want me to continue to do more with it, then all that you have to do is check out the description. There's a lot of things you can do. You can leave a tip for each individual video with a PayPal link there, or you can join the YouTube membership, uh, $4.99 a month to support the channel. You can also pledge on Patreon. You can also subscribe on Twitch or use a Twitch Prime subscription for free on Twitch. Lots of ways to do it. I even have a, a thing called Quest mode on Twitch that lets you earn a subscription for free by playing games. You can look up my quest mode channel. I think there's a link to it either in the description or on my Twitch page, but there's a lot of ways to support the channel if you want to. Okay, I said that was going to be quick. It was a tangent. I'm sorry. This deck is, well, 
depending what kind of magic you like to play, you could call this extremely obnoxious because everything's at flash speed. It has abandoned the cards that you often saw in mono blue, like Curious Obsession, so it doesn't go all in on a single threat, so it can pace its threats very well. It counters dang near everything with two syncopates, four essence scatters. Why is essence scatter suddenly a playable card? Because of Risen Reef, there aren't many ways to get positive value against Risen Reef. Risen Reef comes down and you get a card. Even if you shock or kill this somehow, they still got a card. One way to get positive value against it, which means you're spending less mana than your opponent spent, is with a two mana Essence Scatter. So all of a sudden, Essence Scatter becomes a card if Risen Reef is that popular. Sinister Sabotage. Uh, Sinister CGB. People tell me I look like this character. So this card is back as a three mana, basically cancel effect. Is it right for this deck? Maybe. It's kind of interesting that we have Merfolk Pirates and Merfolk Wizards, but we can't really use like Wizards Retort. We could try a Lookout's Dispersal, and maybe that's good, because this would only cost two mana if you control a Pirate, and both the Cutthroat and the Spectral Sailor are Pirates. But the Surveil matters. It really helps to try to keep your draws coming very well. And the deck does have a good amount of land, 24 land, so it doesn't often miss its third land drop, or at least shouldn't. Then we have Night Pack, Ambusher, Enfield Mystic, more counter spells, and a giant beating that is the Mighty Ambusher. Kind of the only green cards in the deck, which is says really something about uh, both cards, that they would make this archetype so much that you would move into green, uh, double green at that uh, count just to use them. So pretty exciting. Once you uh, look at the overall build, you can see that it probably has a weakness. Does this thing hold up to Teferi? Teferi Time Raveler, which shuts down Flash. It does because the creatures are a little bit stronger. The fact that your Spectral Sailors and your Cutthroats and your Tricksters can beat the Teferi to death makes it so that the deck has a little bit more game. Uh, Ambusher and Frilled Mystic also, just you just need to attack this card down, but it's still a massive pain. And right now, not many people are playing this card, but I feel like Esper is lurking, just waiting and saying, I'm still a really good deck and I'm still gonna wreck you once you're done goofing around with new cards. So keep this in mind, this deck may be a flash in the pan if Teferi Time Raveler continues to dominate the competitive format as it has in the past. Let's go play some games with the deck and see how it goes. Hauntedflower.com has thousands of licensed apparel designs. Licensed means it is legal for me to use the trademarked logos and such, and I paid a lot of money to make them, so please check it out. Game of Thrones t-shirts help you remember better times when characters you liked were still alive. Magic the Gathering mana symbol plant pants. Magic the Gathering mana symbol sleep pants. I don't always wear pants when I stream, but when I do, I wear these. All this and more shipped worldwide at hauntedflower.com. Use the promo code CGB to save 10% and support the channel at the same time. Mm hmm Sailor that we can't play on turn one, but a Scatter, an Unsummon, a Syncopate, all open on turn two. It's too bad these aren't islands, but I will keep the hand. Temple's coming down turn one, and we are not looking for more land. I don't know that I'm looking for another one of these, though. Right now we only have one threat, which isn't a very good clock. I should probably keep any creature, because it's better than keeping a land. I'm sometimes too aggressive with my scries about exactly what I want to hit. I should sometimes just be happy to have something different than uh, what I don't want. Especially when it's land, which is very... Very popular, very easy to find in your deck, very big percentage of your deck. Blue-black thought erase you. No! Get that out of here. Opt off the top, okay. <laughs> oh, we've got an emotor. Oh boy, rev up your engines. Go ahead, discover something. So I sort of like the opt here instead of the Sailor. Let's see, our opponent bins a Catacomb. Like, Sailor does start the attack, but the opt kind of makes sure that our next draws are good. So 
think I like that. Yeah, I do want that. I want to be ready for whatever my opponent's next play is. And there's a temple. There's a trickster. The opponent doesn't seem to be playing creatures, though. So this is basically a grizzly bear that doesn't gain any value. So I'm going to bottom it. And we'll pass it along. What is our opponent's blue-black deck up to? More discovering. It's fine with me. When a deck is sort of fresh, like this blue-green one, if you're paying close attention on Twitch, you probably know what's going on with a deck like this, if you're watching some of the more high-ranked, uh, popular streamers. But if you don't, you may have no idea what's going on. And it's always interesting to me to try to see which camp our opponent is in. Do they know what this deck is up to? Are they going to run a God Eternal Kefnet into an Essence Scatter? They're going for a Narset. So, this deck actually doesn't have a lot of effects to draw the cards. It's possible that I could totally get away with just drawing an extra card on my opponent's turn with the Spectral Sailor. I think I'm okay with this. I have to remember not to try to draw bonus cards on my turn, but that shouldn't be too hard. And a whiff? I'm definitely okay with that. The opponent says, oops. I'll draw my card. I'll play second Sailor. Draw another card. That's a good one. Let's knock you down to size so the opponent doesn't get another use out of their Narset. And things are going well. Grixis. All this time, you were Grixis. But no plays. And the opponent's waiting till end step. It's possible that they plan to have some kind of a reaction to me drawing a card. I'm still going to do it, though, because I have the unsummon. If the opponent shoots a removal spell at a sailor, I can unsummon it in response. Okay, they don't want to shoot anything at the sailors, assuming they had something. Get over there, and we'll get here. Might as well get the Narset off the field. If the opponent tries to defend it, that's fine. It's not doing too much. Be devil So here I like the unsummon the most. It's not a very big cost to replay the Sailor. So we'll just do that in a minute. Plus it can give us another counter on the elemental. And it looks like the opponent's going to say go again. So, Cutthroat. Put a counter on it with the Sailor. Everything going according to plan. I think I always shock my, from my land because every mana can matter here. Especially in, and I don't mean with the deck against everybody, I mean I shock every time I'm against Grixis control here, doing stuff at instant speed. Anytime I'm going to play a control deck where my life total doesn't matter too much, you probably shock with your land. Especially if you have cards in hand and options. You never know when you'll need it. Now the opponent wants to Vraska's Contempt, the Sailor that's attacking the Narset. They really want to protect this Narset. Like, they love this Narset. I think this is fine. It doesn't bother me too much. I've got plenty more where that came from. I'm saving for Old Mystic for a card that will really get my opponent back in the game, along with Syncopate, along with Essence Scatter. Like, the Narset itself isn't stopping me from doing much. I'm still outdrawing my opponent by using Sailor on their turn. Here's Bolas. There's the Essence Scatter. Easy mode. More cards. Now the Narset's definitely going down. And the Cutthroat's becoming a serious contender. I won't forget our time together. Aw, Narset, so sentimental. She won't forget our time together. Ah, flex. I got your Narset. Now I'm lighting my cat on fire. Yes. Yes, kitty.
All right, and Seth will draw a card. Could draw another, but why? Let's leave the cutthroat. Uh, because if we draw another, the opponent might, might, might kill it in response. My god, the counters. There are so many. I can probably just try to keep the opponent from doing anything for the rest of the game now. So, yeah, let's get a Mystic on him. And yes, let's take that action. Let's deal that damage. Now we've got lethal board. Two essence scatters, a syncopate, and a sinister sabotage. Pretty tough to overcome. One thing I wonder about this deck is how it stacks up against traditional mono blue. Part of me says a curious obsession on one of the creatures can be a huge problem if you don't have a trickster, like, immediately. And that traditional mono blue is lower to the ground and a little more reliable. But this deck does seem to have a lot going on. No. No, Bolas. Just no. Just counter all the things. Oh, okay. Now they're nice emotors. That's nice. Bringing back the glory. Sorry, Grixis Mage. Somebody was asking me on Twitter how Grixis is in this meta. It's the same it always is. Okay, not great. Classic Grixis. We've got a Sailor and a Syncopate and a Mystic. Seems good to me. Seems good. I guess Unsummon's very good against Curious Obsession when I was talking about the Mono Blue. Oh, well, this is probably bad. All right, let's get our little buddy going. Do our move. Don't like the way this is leaning at all, but maybe I can counter this light up the stage and hose him. No land, no land, no land. Oh well. Oh! <laughs> Got me. All right, great. <laughs> they sure showed CGB. All right. Get them. Say end turn. You want to lightning me, sure. All right. No, don't want to use the unsummon here. We want to save that for something like a steamkin. But the opponent's pacing carefully. Not sure what all's going on. We're flooding, which is not helping our cause. Four mana. Will it be a frenzy? Not gonna try to ambush. Not gonna try to bounce here. It's a chain whirler. Let's not do that. That seems bad for me. And now we have the lovely unsummon frilled mystic line. So I think we're racing, right? I don't think that blocking's particularly great. Plus, if the opponent tries to play a spell pre-combat, the unsummon and then mystic it and then block is on the table. But too many land. This hand is definitely seven spell seven lands, four spells. Not what you want against red. Okay. Alright, sweet. Good old Frilled Mystic. Doing it. Getting it. Doing what it's gotta do. The opponent finds this nice, unquote. I'm gonna fire this opt off now. We need amp. Ooh. Action we found. I was gonna say we need action. An action we found. Let's get in there. So against red decks, tapped. Definitely tapped. We've got a Firebrand. We've got a Frenzy. Ugh. That must feel nice for the opponent until... Meet the Wolfie Friend. Oh! They do not like being ambushed, you guys. They scooped with a Frenzy on the board? They really hate being ambushed. 
Ooh, that was a nice, nice game. Give me my pack. This is apparently part of my mastery thing. Get some gems from an older set, I guess. Big bonus. All right, uh, we shall try it. We'll need one more blue source along the way. Being on the draw is not good. Oh, yay. Some people still just smash the hell out of mono white. Yay. Whether or not to use an unsummon here. Oh, vampires, of course. I keep on forgetting that vampires is an option now. This thing's a pain in the ass. Being on the draw right now is so sad. I think we bounce it. I think we let the 1-1 one, one do whatever the 1-1 one, one wants to do. Send you home. Let's try that again. Double blue. Might as well not show the opponent the green quite yet. Third land. Do they play around the syncopate? It's going to be the big question. Testing me. Alright. They do play around syncopate like a true professional. But how about this Knight of the Ebon Legion? I feel like we've got to start stopping things. At some point, though, we also have to get down the cutthroat and just start growing it. But this thing, they can keep pounding mana into it and power through the cutthroat no matter what. So, a very powerful one drop. Feels like I do need to keep it off the battlefield. Very unfortunate that we didn't have an essence scatter there, but maybe it will work out. Ooh, Trickster is really good against a Danto. I think we just take it. As much as I want to Trickster ambush the Adanto, I want to save it till later. These are the early phase of the game where we need to make sure that we keep our opponent slowed down with counter spells or sneak our cutthroat onto the battlefield so it can start growing. If we let our opponent get too much far ahead, we're just in a bad place. And if they go to end step, we can play the cutthroat out. Another one. Jesus. All right. Don't need more land right this second. I wouldn't mind more blue sources, but not at the expense of... Not at the expense of having to draw too many lands in a row. And uh, once again, we're going to hold here. Patience, patience, patience. Martyr of Dusk. That one doesn't scare me too much. But it is probably their whole turn. The problem is it's also my last counter. I think that's okay. If we have if we get the cutthroat now down now because of this, I'm a happy guy. Alright, there's a sailor. That's good. We can pump the cutthroat with it and then still have a Mystic. I have a feeling the opponent will try to use a removal spell here. They might be trying to flip their landing by attacking with everybody. We can... Oh, we can't punish it too much. We could play the Trickster to prevent that, but I don't like that either. So grow the Cutthroat. Keep holding up Frilled Mystic as long as possible. Down to five. It's going to be a long road back. The opponent still has four cards and now they have an Adanto. So we're going to need quite the board. Ambusher almost certainly has to be a part of it. That is a card we should not allow. Take that action. Melody. Melody's a sweet one. But I think the trickster on the vanguard is what we want to do next. 
You can hold off the martyr. So you can get in and you can get in. Assuming nothing too bad happens. But let's start reversing the pressure. I'm a bit nervous about something killing my trickster, but at least now they probably want to kill the Brineborn Cutthroat much more. So, the Trickster's ability to take Indestructible away, as well as the ability to make the Adanto a 3-1, uh, makes it a really good blocker for the Adanto. And yeah, Adanto cannot be saved, so that dies. Now we'll see if the opponent has a Champion of Dusk to draw an, some extra cards. It's a pretty scary card. Yep. Two cards. There's another Cutthroat. Taking control of the 1-1 one, one isn't particularly appealing to me. This can be bigger than the champion with the play of another Brineborn. These can't really attack, so right now it's just the Sailor doing some work. I could really use a Night Pack Ambusher though to start building up my board to compete with the Vampire board. And more counters wouldn't hurt either. Tense game, anything could happen. The opponent hasn't shown us any type of removal spell yet, and usually Martyr of Dusk in these decks, it's kind of a tell that they're very removal low. This is one of the flex spots that often goes to removal spells. That resolving is a big problem. Not good. Not good. That's like two Lightning Helix activations away from killing me, and here they come. If the opponent has a second Soren, I believe I just die here. I could try to Spectral Sailor into an Unsummon in response. That's about it. Down to two. The opponent just needs to make another Vampire, so we have to kill Soren. Without question. Soren must die. So I think I'm playing out the other Cutthroat. Or do I save this for an Ambush to block the Champion of Dusk? If I attack Soren here here, here. I think we want to be on the board, as opposed to in the hand. And this hesitation is some kind of a removal spell. There's a mystic. So if the opponent block kills this with a removal spell, then Soren dies to everything else attacking. But if this lives, it just turns around and attacks us to death. Maybe the Mystic can block it. Actually, I can counter the removal spell. See, so block here. Now, if I leave back one more creature because I know that the removal spell won't work, that's safe. And this is probably the worst creature. If I have to chump block with something, I do it with that. So now at this point, the opponent blocks here, they still lose their Sorn. They block here, they still lose their Sorn. If they block here and then use a removal spell here, we counter it and they lose their Sorn. Which means you don't have to be a part of this. You can peck at the face, or you can also stand tall in case the opponent has two removal spells on the way back. But they probably don't. And I don't really want to block with you anyway. So let's go like this. Take it. All right. Does the opponent have another Soren? All they have to do is show it to me. And they got it. Land. I never draw the Sorens when I'm trying to burn my opponent out when I play Vampires. It's one of the reasons I gave up on the deck. <laughs> it was just like, well, I could draw a Soren here, but I never did. Maybe my opponent has better luck than me, although a decision of that magnitude wouldn't take this long, I don't think. 
into the attack step. So we could go for a double block. If the opponent has a removal, I guess that's fine. Because then they used it on one of these and not one of these. Okay. Sky Marcher in the house. Legion Lieutenant in the house. And they're low on gas now. There's an unsummon. The melody is definitely a play I can make here. I could take their lieutenant away from them. I'm not sure what else I can steal. I guess stealing a Knight of the Ebon Legion would be nice, but they've already used two of them. Give me you. And let's get in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This can make nine. If my opponent gets up to ten, I can bounce this thing. Let's get some big hits in. Hitting with that cutthroat puts us in range. Uh huh. Okay, here we go. Bounce it. It's still something I'll have to deal with down the stretch with the Sailor. And there was an argument I should have entrancing melodied it, but this thing pumping the life linkers from the first fort is what really swayed me. Alright. So, how does the opponent want to manage the cutthroat? takes it. You got a tough guy. Alright. Lay you out. Enter tapped. 100%. It's a tense one. If we somehow slip this cutthroat through, it's over. But I don't know if we can do that against all the tokens. The opponent probably wants to trade their Sky Marcher for my card drawer. Or do they? No, because now they're a removal spell away from victory. Ooh. Okay, that's a good one. That is a good one. I think that means I can use an attack with both here. If the opponent blocks with two, they go up to eight, but then they're down the tokens, so they're not getting ahead of me anymore. I think they're going to be conservative here, yes. All right, but now they're at three, so we don't, or four. We don't have to slip that much damage through. Enter tapped. <laughs> Playing with fire on these breeding pools. All right. There's a vanguard. The opponent can't make it indestructible right now without killing themselves. Pass to attackers. Ooh, they're coming in. Ambush time. Let's knock you out of the sky. And the opponent is going to scoop to that. They are about to lose their flyer. They're about to lose two of their creatures. I was going to go to one, and then the counterattack was going to be, let's see, block, block. I don't know if it would be lethal, but it was gonna be really close, and I think the opponent just didn't want, just knew that the game was going to spiral from there. Trickster bringing it home as the MVP. I hope you enjoyed this video with the blue-green tempo deck. I sat down, recorded three games, and they went really well. Especially the last one, a real sweater, a real heartbreaker for the opponent, a real adrenaline rush for the CGB family. 
This deck is exciting, and is it a real deck? Is it going to compete? I think Teferi Time Raveler will have a lot to say about it. I think that the Night Pack Ambusher has the potential to be a very strong card, but it also depends on the removal played in the meta. If Essence Scatter does become a popular card because of Risen Reef, it's also really good against this deck in the mirror as well, and I'm kind of curious to see how that all goes. Well, I'm going to say thank you for watching this video, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.